Hey y'all, hey. Welcome to episode 18 of Motivation With Me. So, before you stop this video, don't stop this video. Okay, go ahead, watch it to the end, play it. You ain't even gotta watch it. You could just listen to it. Like, you ain't doing nothing else because you're on YouTube. So, just watch it to the end, play this video. Don't stop at two minutes. You need to hear this because we are in the We Matter series and make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Share with a friend. So, I'm gonna take these glasses off and I'm sad because they cute or whatever. I love my red glasses, but that glare kills me. Y'all don't understand. So we are in the We Matter series. Um, and this second, <laughs> look at me. This second video is going to be about mass incarceration. Okay, so the first video we had was about police brutality and say their names. Where we talked about the police that are killing our young black men and our young black women. And just the madness that's going on. Like, that's been going on since the beginning of time. Like, since slavery, since the Jim Crow era. Like, just too much. It's too much. And we are tired. Like, we are tired. And... We're going to use our voices. We're going to protest. We're going to do so many things because there has to be some type of change. We cannot keep doing this. Okay. We, we're not going to do it. Like I'm, I'm not for it. I don't, I don't like that. Like they say, I don't like that. So today we're going to touch on mass incarceration. I feel like, you know, this is a very important thing. My, one of my favorite documentaries is 13th. First of all, I love Ava DuVernay. Oh my God. Super fan. But one of my favorite documentaries is 13. And I've watched it, I don't know how many times, like countless times. And I watch her and I watch Michelle Alexander and I watch a lot about mass incarceration. Um, I've been introduced to it by my aunt. So I wanted to speak on that for the second part. And then next week, we're going to talk about white privilege. That one's going to be fun. So anyway. You know, I always hit y'all with the stats, but before I go there, one thing, one line, if you don't get nothing else out of this video, I want you to remember, if they can't control us, then they kill us. Mass incarceration is a form of control. If they can't control us, now we have this new law where police decide, eh, we're just going to kill them. Like we we we're not gonna even throw them in jail. We gonna we just gonna execute them and just kill them on the streets for no apparent reason. Like, you know, March 16, two thousand three, in Shre Shreveport, Louisiana, Marquis Haspeth shot thirty eight times. Thirty eight times. Why did you feel the need to shoot somebody thirty eight times? Why did you feel the need to shoot somebody anyway? Who had his hands up and was not doing anything to you? Stop it. I don't have time. I don't have time. I really don't. And it's that if they can't control us, they're going to kill us. So going into mass incarceration, as y'all know, the 13th Amendment says it abolished slavery, except for the punishment of a crime. So basically, criminals are slaves. Okay, and if you have not read the new Jim Crow book, I strongly suggest you read it by Michelle Alexander because we have to realize that slavery is in the form of this justice system and the prison system that the white people and these corporations are making money off of how many black bodies they put into prison for minor crimes. Oh, I'm getting into it. Don't worry about it. 1972. That's when around the time mass incarceration started. We started off with 300,000 people for the prison population. Today, we're at 2.3 million. Black men make up 6% of the U.S. population. But 40% of our black men are in jail. Why? Why? 40% and we only make they only make up 6% because like I said in the last video black people in general only make up 13%. So half of that is our black men. 
and they make up 40 percent of the prison population make it make sense make it make sense and there are so many reasons why that is a thing first of all we the u.s is only five percent of the world as far as population goes but we have 25 percent of the world's prisoners why is it that we have more prisoners than any other country but we only make up five percent somebody make it and this is supposed to be the land of the free it's supposed to be the land of the free no this is not the land of the free for black people this is this, there's no freedom okay we don't have freedom after all the fighting and the protesting and everything that we've done, the civil rights movement, the Black Panthers, everything that we have done for our people and for our communities, there's no freedom. We are never completely free because we are oppressed, which, again, that's going to be in white privilege. Like, y'all, I'm t I'm, this series is really touching me. Like I said, I didn't want to even go there, but I'm going there because, again, I have a voice that works very loudly, and I do not care about other people's opinions. I'm going to say what I want to say. Period. So, we've already discussed the 13th Amendment. We've already discussed the statistics of today's prison population. Now, we're going to go into these different words and these different laws that were created by our administration, Nixon, Reagan, Clinton, because let's not, let's not forget, the Clinton administration introduced the three-strike law. And this is why. So we're going to watch a little clip, okay, up here, where we see how that rule was started. Okay. Violent crime and the fear it provokes are crippling our society. Then some high profile, very horrendous crimes take place. Residents pulled together in the search for 12 year old Polly Class. They're now coping with the discovery of her body over the weekend. Polly Class abducted from her bedroom at home and, and ultimately killed, which led to the California three strikes and your outlaw. When you commit a third violent crime, you will be put away and put away for good. Three strikes you know and you are out. First of all, you know, and Polly Class, Lord rest her soul, that baby was only 12 years old. She was only 12 years old, and I, my heart it, my heart and my love and my prayers go out to her family. I don't care how long ago it happened. Like, it, it, it goes out. I don't know how I want my hair. But my heart and blessings and prayers go out to, to Polly Class's family. But if you notice, Richard Davis, Richard Allen Davis, was a white man. Okay. He had already been charged with two more, two other felonies. And he was sentenced to 16 years and he only served half of that he only served half of that for kidnapping and murdering a young girl but let that have been a brother let that have been a black man he would have got life without parole easy killing a, a little white girl how dare you let's not forget Emmett Till let's not forget the Central Park Five how dare you no, you're going to get life without parole. And that's where the three strike rule came about. So three times and you're out. If you're convicted of three felonies, you're in, in prison forever, for life. That's the, that's the bullshit that Clinton came up with. And everything that Clinton came up with, he backtracked and said he thought it was okay at the time. No, he didn't. But he realized the error of his ways. No, he didn't. So when his wife started running for office, then y'all start apologizing. And she started, you know, saying all this. Well, you know, back then we thought it was going to work. And we thought we were doing something to make it. Girl, shut up. Shut up. You didn't know you didn't. No. Just because you get up there and apologize for a mistake you made, that's supposed to make it okay? Because you done put all of our black men in jail? For what? Now, don't get me wrong on this. I'm not saying 
no black men should be in jail because there are real criminals out there who are black men and women. Let's, for starters, my rapists and my abusers are black men that need to have their ass under the jail. All the, the rapists, the pedophiles, the murderers, the child abusers, the everybody who has done something wrong, the lady that killed my daddy who was not in jail, her ass need to be in there too. Black or white, I don't give a damn if she green. You you made a fucking you Y'all know how I get about that lady. Like Oh, I can't stand that. Like y'all she didn't even get arrested. Like I'm done. I'm done. But you you I'm not saying criminals no matter what race, should not be in jail. That's not what I'm saying. What the purpose is, is y'all are locking up black men for petty crimes. Like the crack and cocaine era. The crack era. How is it that crack gets three times the charge of cocaine? When it's the same, it's the same shit. I don't understand. This whole war on drugs and law and order that they claimed that they were trying to do. No, what you were trying to do was put more black men in jail by saying, oh, black men are selling crack or doing crack. So in order to reduce this in our community and reduce this drug war in our country, we're going to now declare a war on drugs, which essentially meant a war on black people. War on drugs, my ass. Y'all came up with that so y'all could throw us in jail. Period, point blank. That's where that bullshit ass war rule came from. And then let's not get into the fact that we were super predators and we're supposed to be scared of the black man and the black man is going to rape the white woman and this and it. Central Park 5 to be example. Those men went away. Babies. They were teenagers. And they were falsely accused. Do you know how many people are on death row right now or in jail because they were falsely confused? Con uh, falsely convicted for something that they did not do? Anthony Ray Hinton. I suggest you look up his story. If you have not read The Sun Doesn't Always Shine, then you need to read his book. Read his book. Read, watch his story. Watch his interviews. Like, they are, there are so many people, black people, who are in jail right now for being wrongly convicted. Not to mention, we take plea bargains. 95% of the time, there's going to be a plea bargain. Because the courts scare us in a way where, oh, you could take this plea and do 15 years or you can risk going to trial and get life. So in order for us not to get life, we take the plea because we're not educated on how the justice system works. Not only that, we know the justice system does not work for us. They are not for us at all, period in any way, shape, or form. They're not for us. Because white people get treated differently than black people. Rich and guilty is over poor and innocent. If you're poor, nope, can't help you. You're black, sorry, gotta go. But let it be a rich white boy. They ain't even gotta be rich, let him be white. Cause I guarantee you, a white person, let's say for instance, a white man get caught selling crap. Black man get caught selling crack. I'll bet every part of my life that that white man is going to get way less time than the black man. They might get a white man maybe two years. If not house arrest, but then they get a black man 15 to 20. Excuse? For the same charge. And then if that doesn't work, they go into poor communities. And I saw a documentary on this too. They go into poor communities and they give out unnecessary tickets. They give out unnecessary tickets. Let a black let a black man get pulled over because he was going two two uh, miles over the speed limit, or because he forgot to put on his turn signal. Then all of a sudden, okay, now you got a ticket, 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 ticket. But let that be a white boy that got pulled over. Oh, sir, I'm gonna just give you a warning. You have a nice day. You might fuck around. They might know each other. 
So we get all of these tickets in poor black communities that we can't pay because they're outrageous. We don't have that type of money. We work in two and three jobs, especially because black women are left alone to take care of the kids because y'all don't put their daddy in jail for some bullshit. So now you breaking up the family, which is another issue in itself. I'm not, I'm not understanding. So you got a pile of tickets this high and that you can't pay. And now it's a warrant out for your arrest because you ain't paid your tickets because you don't have the money. And since there's a warrant out now, you got to go to jail. Tickets lead to no pay, and no pay means to jail time. I went to jail. Some of you know, some of you don't. When I was uh, 17, I went to jail for disorderly conduct. You want to know why I went to jail for disorderly conduct? I was at the movies at Edwards. And the owner of that little Harlow's restaurant that used to be in there, whatever that bullshit was, um told the white owner, told me and my black best friend, we couldn't stand in front of his entryway. And we was in the way. We were nowhere near your entryway. So we moved. He still had a problem with us standing too close. He caused the white officer over there to get us away from there. We were nowhere near it. The white officer becomes disrespectful and aggressive with my best friend, starts pointing his finger in her face. And I say, hey, don't don't put your finger in my friend's face. Now, mind you, I'm 17. I was hot. I was violent back then. I didn't know what white police were capable of. Don't put your hand like this in my best friend's face. Don't do that. So they kicked us out. Okay, fine, whatever. Fuck y'all. This movie ain't that fucking important. Bye. And they said, we catch you on here again. We're going to get you for trespassing. She went and got her money back, her and along with my cousin. Went and got their money back for their tickets, so we had already bought our tickets. I go in there to get my money back, because I'm like, well, let me get my money back, too. I couldn't even get to the damn window good before I had three motherfucking white officers on my damn neck. Then threw me to the ground. I got on a mini skirt and a spaghetti strap shirt and some sandals. I am 17. What the fuck you think I'm going to do to you? It's three of y'all. Your knee don't need to be in my back. I am a girl, a teenage girl. I am not a threat to you. So they decided they wanted to make an example out of me and put me in jail for disorderly conduct on Easter weekend. So I was in there about three days. All right. But the whole time I was in there in city jail, you know what most of those black women were in there for? Fucking tickets. Sitting out time for tickets they couldn't pay. Because that's how they do. They give us all these bullshit ass tickets and then when we can't pay them, oh, now you got to go jail and you serve your time. Since you can't give us your dollars, you gonna give us your time and your freedom. No. That's fucking ridiculous. And yes, I cuss. If you don't like it, get off this channel right now. Especially if it's something I'm passionate about. I'm going all the way in. And some, one, one thing that I'm passionate about is my people. My black men and women. That and any form of abuse, those two things are the quickest way to get me hot. Because it's ridiculous how they do us. 400 years of slavery. Everybody always bring up slavery. This is the new Jim Crow. This is the new, this is the new slavery. Because you're throwing all of our black men in jail. Mass incarceration for no reason. For no apparent reason. And then, like I said, you break families up doing that. Because now, you have a, a woman who has kids with a black man, but you didn't send him to jail. So now, not only does the woman have to raise the kids on her own, she got two or three jobs. But now these kids have to grow up without a daddy. Or have to be without a daddy. And if that's a girl, if these are daughters... Now they're going to have daddy issues because they didn't have a daddy in their life. And if they're boys, they weren't taught how to become men because their daddy is in jail for some bullshit. For some bullshit. And now they got to see their dad through a goddamn screen. Through a plastic window. And even if they do, don't have the plastic window. I think it's called conjugal visits. Don't 
quote me on that. I'll look it up and put it across the screen. But even still, you can't touch them. First of all, who wants to bring that? And don't let's not forget the babies. Who wants to bring their baby to to the jail, to the prison, to see their daddy every weekend? Like y'all better, y'all better quit playing with me. Y'all better quit playing with me. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with us. Just stop it. Stop with the bullshit. Stop with the mass incarceration. They got more prisons than they got schools. Prisons, a prison, that's a billion dollar system that corporations like Walmart, State Farm, Avis, all of these big companies that we shop at are making money off of ALEC, which is attached to the prison system. Do your goddamn research. Like I said, if you watch the 13th documentary, you gonna get all the information that you need. Do your research. Know what you're participating in. Well, know what you're supporting. That's why if I can find it in a black in a black business somewhere, I don't need to go to Bath and Body Works for candles because my friends sell candles. I don't need to. I get my shirts custom made. I got this from a black business. A black shot. I got these earrings from a black vendor. Because if I can support my people, oh, I'd rather go to y'all. Any day. So, I try to keep my videos short. And this is, you know, because people got, y'all got some short attention spans. Y'all act like y'all can't watch the video all the way through. I don't know why. But, listen, I, sis trying to get her watch hours up. My subscribers up. So I'm going to go ahead and need y'all to watch these videos. I don't care if you play them all the way through. Just go to my page. Go to the playlist. Whatever you're going to do, just let them mugs play. You can walk around and clean the house. If you got a dog, like my friend Natalie Love say, play it for the dog. Cut it on and leave for work. I don't care. Just do it. Like, share, and subscribe. Because I ain't done. I ain't done. This is, this is is I'm going to do multiple things. So this is a continuing series. Because we matter. We matter. And I'm adamant about that. I don't know how many times I got to say that. And I'm going to keep saying it over and over and over. And as long as I'm here on this here earth, y'all going to hear my mouth whether you like it or not. And if you don't like it, they go to know. God gave me a voice and I'm going to use it. God gave me the ability to write. And to be a creative artist, I'm going to use it. And there is nothing or no one can do to stop me. What are you going to do? I'm sorry, what? Okay, that's what I thought. Because I thought a white bitch said something. Don't play with me. Don't come for me. Don't come for my people. I have black men in my life. I got brothers. I got a boyfriend. I got uncles. I got sisters. Best friends. No. No. We will not stand for this. We will not. And I'm going to keep going until I have said what I had to say. So next episode, we're going to talk about white privilege because I definitely wanted to get into that. I definitely want to get into white privilege. Don't That one's going to... Ooh, y'all. I'm going to try to keep that one short. But Oh, I'm, oh, I'm getting into white privilege because that's, that's... I can't get into it. Ooh, y'all don't understand how bad... Look, y'all might get two videos in one week. But again, I thank you for tuning in to episode 18. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. If you made it to the end of this video, I love you. And make it to the end of the video this coming next. Any ones after that, any ones after that, any ones after that. Okay? So, again, we matter. Black lives matter. Keep that in mind. Like, I don't stay woke. Eh, cliche, but uh, stay woke. Be conscious. Do your research. Read up about our people. Stand for our people. I don't care how you do it. You don't have to protest if you don't like protesting. Use your voice. Use whatever is important to you. Make a post on fa on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram. Because I'm not a protester. I, I ain't going to be out there on the front lines. But I will use my voice and my fingers. I will write a book. And I will do this video. And more videos to come. So, again, thank y'all for tuning in <laughs> to episode 18 of Motivation with Me.